quickly. Would you like to know a secret? Yes. The secret is I forgot to put up the words for that song that we just sang, and when I forget to do that, I can look around the room and, and understand who's new. Because you don't know the words to the song we just sang. And many devotees are singing very enthusiastically, and some of you are appreciating the melody and something, but you don't know the words. So my apology for not putting the words up, I should do that next time. Now something that's not a secret is that on Tuesday, two days from today, we'll be observing Ram Nomi. And in case you, you haven't heard this, you all recognize the young form of Krishna that has been installed in Ayodhya. Yes? Huh? You all know. Here's something you may not know. On Ram Nomi Day, at noon, they have some figured out way of having direct sunlight come directly onto the tilak of the deity of Ramachandra for about four to six minutes. It looks like a laser light because they, you know, from last year they, they have a little video of it performing RT and exactly at noon light comes from somewhere up there it's direct sunlight, it's not just a spotlight right onto his forehead so it's a little bit early in the morning over here for 12 o'clock over there <laughs> but I'm sure they'll have videos of it it's really nice, really nice. The deity is very beautiful. So in honor of our upcoming celebration for Ram Nomi, I'm intimidated. You couldn't hear? Come on. A yeah, little bit? Okay. So the topic I'd like to speak about for this Sunday's program is the unparalleled compassion of Lord Ramachandra. And we could be here for several hours talking on that topic, but we don't have a f several hours, so I'll try to just speak on a few points. One of those points is a teaching for some of you that are newer, because now I know that there's some of you that are newer. There's a writing by one of the intimate associates and followers of Lord Chaitanya named Rupa Goswami, who wrote a book, entire book, about Bhakti Rasa. Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, the ocean of the nectar devotion. And in that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, one of the teachings he gives is that there are primary and secondary rasas. There's many things to say, but I just wanted to say this one thing. Each of the primary and each of the secondary rasas has a presiding deity. <laughs> And Ramachandra is the presiding deity of Karuna, Rasa. Karuna means compassion. He's the presiding deity. So within the principle of compassion, there's different subsets. There's something that you feel for another. There's a recognition of something about the other individual, an understanding of them, and then a motivation you want to do something for them. This is just very simple 
science of compassion. And these first two is little different than the third one. The third one is something that you do, and the first one is something that you feel. So it's both. Compassion is you feel something and you do something when you have compassion for another. A really nice example of this that I like is found in Adhyatma Ramayana. Adhyatma Ramayana is one of the many Ramayanas and it's discussed in Chaitanya Charitamrita. You can look it up later if you like. There's details, several, there's a couple paragraphs drawn from that book where Ikshvaku is one of the ancestors of Ramachandra. Let's do this. Many of you know Bhagavad Gita or something of Bhagavad Gita. In the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, long, long ago, he taught the science of Bhagavad Gita to Vivaswan. Vivaswan is the name of the sun god, Vivaswan. Vivaswan, in turn, taught to his son, Manu, who happens to be known as Vivaswata Manu. Manu. Vivaswan to Manu to Ikshvaku. During this particular Vivaswata Manu time, he sent his son, Ikshvaku, to the earthly realm to rule in Ayodhya. He arranged for the city of Ayodhya to be constructed. That's Manu. And it, of course, the abode of the Supreme Lord is eternal. You can't construct an abode of the Supreme Lord. But he manifested the city of Ayodhya and sent Ikshvaku to begin the Surya dynasty or the Sun dynasty, Ikshvaku. And along with sending Ikshvaku, he sent Listen carefully. He sent with Ikshvaku a deity of Sita Ram. Long before Ramachandra came, a deity from this higher realm came to the earthly realm in the city of Ayodhya. And through the lineages of kings, according to this Adhyatma Ramayana, the kings, the excessive kings following Ikshvaku, worship the deity of Sita Ram, including his father, Dasarath, worshipped the, they're called Mula Sita Ram, Mula meaning root, original. And during Ramchandra's reign, he also worshipped this Sita Ram deity. And then something happened. That something that happened was while he was ruling in Ayodhya, there was a very dedicated brahmana that he would not, he just had this vow that he wouldn't eat or take a drop of water until he saw Ramachandra that day and then he would break his fast. Sometimes Ramachandra would go out of station for a few days at a time. For a few days at a time he ate nothing. He took not one drop of water until Ramchandra returned. One time he was gone for nine days, for nine days. Now many of us will be fasting on Tuesday. He fasted for nine days <laughs> until he saw Ramachandra. So Ramachandra heard of this Brahmana. He called the Brahmana and gave him a gift. He said, you take these deities from Ikshvaku, these Sita Ram deities, and you worship them. And so every day when you see them, you'll see me. You don't have to have this fasting program anymore. He's very special deities, right? And when the Brahmana became very old, he made a gift of these deities to Hanuman, very suited recipient of Sita Ram deities. And through time, according to this Adhyatma Ramayana, from the time that he left this realm 
to from the Ganda Mandana mountain, he passed first, he passed the deity on to Bhima. Because as he, Hanuman is an incarnation of Vayu, Bhima is an incarnation or the son of Vayu, right? Bhima, Vayu. And Bhima worshipped them, and the Pandavas along with him worshipped them, and kings from the descendants of the Pandavas worshipped them. And after some time, the deity, same deity, was given to an arisen king named Shema, Shema Kanta. And within that lineage of kings, they were passed on until there was another set of kings, the Gajapati kings. Gajapati kings were the kings that ruled during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time. Some of you know from Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in course of time, through passage of time, one of those kings happened to become a disciple of, Nara, of Madhvacharya. what to do. Just pretend it's not happening, I guess. For those of you that aren't sannyasis, that sound vibration is different. <laughs> For those of you that are grahastas, you're used to it. So it's not, doesn't do the same thing to your nervous system that does to mine. Okay, back to the story. So, Narahari Tirtha became a disciple, initiated disciple of Madhvacharya. He wanted to become a mendicant like Madhvacharya. Madhvacharya said, no, you stay and continue in your position as king and you can influence people by your pure bhakti to also become followers of Krishna and worship Krishna. So he, he did that. And then three months, before Madhvacharya left this world, he then gave the deity, the original Ikshvaku brought from the higher regions, deity of Sitaram, to Madhvacharya, who had the deity installed in his main temple, the Udupi Krishna temple. There's nine temples, that's at the center. So here's a photograph of those deities. This is the Mula Rama, that's Mula Sitaram deities installed in the temple. Now, in case you're from Udupi, because I know some people from Udupi, they informed me, you know what? What? Some time ago, there was a dispute between one group of Brahmanas in Udupi and another group of Brahmanas in Udupi. No. Yes, there was a dispute. And one of those that had a dispute, he set his own deities, that he says, this is the original Sitaram deity. And then the people that are still in Udupi say, no, the original Sitaram deities are still here. Just sharing. And Here's Udupi Krishna dressed like Lord Ramachandra on Ram Nomi. Those of you that know the Udupi Krishna deity, it's Bala Krishna, little boy, carrying a stick and a little rope for taking care of the cows. And on Ram Nomi, they dress him this way. Not only do they dress him this way, but look at that. Right in front of him is Hanuman. And over to his side, there's Sita. And to his right, there's Lakshman. And then the day after Ram Nomi, they disappear. It's just Udupi Krishna. So our topic, the topic I wanted to speak about is the compassion. The very, very special compassion of Lord Ramachandra. And as you know, Ramachandra 
very compassionately had such confidence in Hanuman that he gave his personal ornament, a ring, to Hanuman to show to Sita, when you find Sita, I trust that you'll find Sita, but she'll, she may think you're, you're some Rakshasa trick. After convincing her it's not a trick, you show her this ring, she'll know it's my ring. She'll recognize it immediately. That's how much confidence he had. And sure enough, lots of obstacles, Hanuman crossed the sea, obstacles, so many things happened, and he came back and informed Ramachandra, Sita has been found. So what did Ramachandra say? Compassionate Ramachandra said, the only thing I can offer you is my embrace. <laughs> what better thing would gift to give Hanuman than the warm embrace of Lord Ramachandra? The compassionate Ramachandra upon anyone. We'll hear some more about his compassion. Here's a nice painting of a scene that's found both in uh, Yudhakanda of Valmiki Ramayana and another section of Ramayana I'll mention in a moment. So the scene is Hanuman is being given a necklace that belongs to Sita because Ram, this is at the time of the coronation and gifts are given at different times for different people. And Ram says the following, it's, it's in Yudhakanda, but it says, Dear Sita, give the pearl necklace to a person with whom you are pleased and in whom the following are ever present. Sharpness, firmness, renown, dexterity, competence, modesty, prudence, virility, prowess, and intelligence. So Sita smiled. She looked around the room. She knew who to give it to. <laughs> she gave to Hanuman. The black-eyed Sita gave that pearl necklace to Hanuman. Hanuman, the foremost among the monkeys, by wearing that necklace, which was as white as a heap of moonlight beams, shone brilliantly as a mountain silvered by a white cloud. The poetry of Ramayana is also very exquisite. I'm sure the necklace was too. <laughs> very compassionate, very compassionate. Unfortunately, Ramchandra was unable to perform the funeral rites for his father, but he was able to perform the funeral rites for Jatayu. And he comments, I was unable to do this for my father, but here, when he found Jatayu in this very difficult situation about to expire, he's treating him with such kindness as his treating his father at the time of departure. And according to Valmiki Ramayana, as he was embracing him, as he departed, the sole four-armed form of Jatayu ascended. Another feature of his compassion, notice in this B.G. Sharma painting that little squirrel in the lower left corner. You all know the story. Probably everybody in the room knows the story. But <clears throat> the story goes when they were building the bridge to Lanka, they were gathering stones from all over the place. Here, at least this particular version shows they're writing Ram's name so the rocks will float, etc., etc. And Hanuman saw the little squirrel who is so small, what could he do? He was just kicking some sand according to his capacity. And Hanuman said, please get out of the way. <laughs> We're trying to build the bridge. We don't want to squish you. And as he spoke like that, Lord Ramachandra admonished Hanuman. You're big, you're powerful, and this squirrel is tiny and he's very small. What can he do? But according to his capacity, he's serving as well as you are serving. So please let him serve. 
compassionate even to a squirrel in the building of a bridge. The bridge took five, five days to complete according to the descriptions in Ramayana. The distance between the land and Lanka was 800 miles and the bridge was five miles wide in five days. Pretty amazing, huh? But besides floating rocks. One of the biggest obstacles in the whole of Ramayana is Ravana. So when Ravana was born, his features were very unusual. He had 10 heads, 20 arms, big fangs, according to Valmiki Ramayana. And when his father, Vishravas, saw this child come from the mother, he gave him the name Dasagriva. Ten necks, Dasagriva. And that name stuck until the scene that you see in this illustration. He had powers, and he was using those powers when he went to Mount Kailash, and he started lifting Mount Kailash. And as he was lifting Mount Kailash, the whole of the mountain started to tremble. And as the painting shows, Parvati said to Lord Shiva, what's that, what's that? He said, don't worry, it's just some puffed up fellow down at the base of the mountain. I'll just press my toe on the mountain and his arms are gonna get squished. So his arms were getting, his 20 arms were getting squished by the toe of Lord Shiva. And he started making a terrible, terrible, terrible pain, screaming sound, a roaring sound. So he became, after that time, known as Ravana, he of the terrifying roar. As we all know, this is now the topic is Ramchandra's compassion. But Ravana was the elder brother. He had two other brothers and one sister. Kumbhakarna was brother number two. And Vibhishan was the sibling number four. And in between was Shurpanaka. So they each had done this long description of their austerities and what they wanted from their austerities. And Ravana wanted immortality. And the answer was, sorry, Charlie, <laughs> no immortality. <laughs> then he did something clever. I can't be killed this way, that way, the other way, the other way, the other way. Similar to what Hiranyakashipu wanted. So those boons were granted, but he specifically didn't ask for being killed by a human or an animal because I'm, you know, they're puny and insignificant. So sure enough, that was the means that brought about his destruction. And because of his power and so forth, he traveled in, he, he had a stepbrother. Means his father had a son, Vaishravana, and Vaishravana became anointed as Kuvera. And his father gave him a place to stay because he asked, where should I stay? And Lanka, because it was vacant at that time, remote and so forth. So when he became very powerful, he had combat with his stepbrother and defeated him and took over Lanka as well as he took over the Pushpaka Vimana of Kuvera. He was, he was a brute without all the details. He was a brute. He was a terrible person to the max. And when he went to kidnap Sita, and he did what he did to kidnap Sita, that was also mischief, etc. 
most of the his grandfather told him Malyavan told him give Sita back this long description Kumbhakarna said give Sita back return Sita to Ram his young brother Vibhishan three times he tried his brother was Ravana was so angry with him he said if you weren't my brother I'd kill you get out of here so he left and when he left we talked about this today he left with four ministers and he had mystic powers among other things he could travel without a vimana without an airplane and rather than going directly to Ramchandra what he did was when he landed 800 miles later he didn't land on the ground he stayed in the air as we see and he requested the devotee of Ram Sugriva was one of Ram's dear devotees to carry a message to Ramchandra and ask if Ramchandra would accept him uh, give him shelter Sugriva carried the message along with his comment don't accept him I don't trust him XYZ reasons without all the history he knows you're so powerful Ravan is going to be defeated he wants to be the next king so his, he's self interested he's not want to be your shelter taking devotee he wants to be the next king etc etc he has inspiration selfish motives etc so Ramchandra consulted his ministers that's what good kings do before he decided we heard this today when he asked Hanuman Hanuman didn't speak up because he's you know a humble person and Hanuman said he's already accepted him I know his heart and this celebrated verse here's the celebrated verse that according to the commentators of Ramayana shows his compassion it is my eternal principle that if any living being takes shelter of me even one saying I am yours then I award that person freedom from all fear the very next verse even if Ravana after all of what he's done and kidnapping Sita and all the bad things that he's done if he came and took shelter of me I give him shelter too because his nature is he's the he is the presiding deity of compassion during the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there was <coughs> three brothers Rupa, Sanatan and Anupam Rupa and Sanatan were devotees of Krishna from childhood they were from a Brahmin family and very devoted to Krishna etc and they had a third brother his name was Anupam and Lord Chaitanya informed him that in the course of travels Anupam died his younger brother died so Sanatan Goswami starts speaking about his younger brother where he Rupa and Sanatan actually tried to persuade Anupam to become devoted to Krishna because and gave their explanation so hearing from them he looked up to them as elder brothers he wanted to but he couldn't so he started he, the next day he came to them and started crying this is right in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I've sold my head at the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. I cannot take it away. That would be too painful for me. And when Lord Chaitanya heard this about Sanatana Goswami's younger brother, he said, there's also a devotee in Navadvip. His name is Murari Gupta. And Murari Gupta 
has a similar mood of devotion to Lord Ramachandra. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu turned, this is from Chaitanya Bhagavat, on the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asked Mari Gupa, Gupta to recite Lord Ramachandra's glories. And they're having everything to do with his compassion. May I, birth after birth, sing the glories of that Lord who made friends with the Chandala Guha. You know, the, the previous image is Guha worshiping, worshiping and washing the, the feet. Now, he's a tribal chief, lives in the forest. Chandala, not very elevated, educated, but he was very devoted to Lord Ramachandra. We're going to hear some more about him. And despite his lack of material qualification, Ramachandra accepted him. This is from Chaitanya Bhagwat, all these verses. The Lord killed Vali and entrusted the kingdom to Sugriva out of compassion. He made friends with Sugriva. One, so one is a chandala, the other is a monkey. I worship the lotus feet of the master of the three worlds who delivered Ahalyar. And you know the story. I don't need to repeat the story. But she had made some mistake, and her husband cursed her to become a stone until the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra came and touched her stone-looking form, and she became revived completely compassion. By his mercy, all the inhabitants of Ayodhya went to Vaikuntha in their same bodies. These are references from Marari Gupta, why he had such love and dedication and devotion to Ramachandra, because of his qualities, particularly in these verses mentioned, his compassion. And it moved his heart so much he couldn't take his head away from the feet of Lord Ramachandra. Back again to Guha, when Guha was assisting Lord Ramachandra to cross the Ganges, he arranged for a boat. And this is a devotee that made a nice painting to illustrate this passage. The boatman came. He allowed Sita to get on the boat. He allowed Lakshman to get on the boat, but when Ramchandra tried to get on the boat, he wouldn't let him on the boat. He, he said, I'm already married. And I heard that just by putting his feet on a rock, the rock became a woman. And I already got a wife. <laughs> and I'm not so wealthy, so he can't get on the boat. I'm sorry. These two can get on the boat, but not him. And Guha was like taken aback. What are you talking about? He said, on one condition. What's the one condition? I have to wash the dust off his feet before he gets on the boat. It was a trick. So he, Ramchandra smiled knowingly, and he allowed him to wash his feet, and he took the water and drank the water and sprinkled the water on his family members and he took him across the Ganges River in the boat. It's a nice pastime. Compassionately, he gave his foot wash to a boatman who wouldn't let him on the boat. <laughs> I heard about his feet. Can't get on my boat, thank you. And there's so many, many, many others. Mm -hmm. This is just uh, because of time constraint. There's so many personalities who were involved in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, who is the presiding deity of Karuna Rasa. And so naturally, that Karuna Rasa made its way into so many, many, many relationships and loving exchanges with his devotees. So this is just a little attempt in the time that we have to speak something about the great, great compassion. Because the, the, the Supreme Lord has unlimited qualities. 
unlimited qualities, his unlimited personality. There's a very nice um, verse from Padma Purana. I'll end with this. There's a verse from Padma Purana that s speaks to the fact that <coughs> the, these three forms of the Lord, Lord Ramachandra, Krishna, and Nishingadev, they're in a certain category amongst the forms of Bhagavan. The Sanskrit word is paravasta, which means they manifest the fullness of the bhagas of Bhagavan, whereas the other forms of Bhagavan, they have, but they don't manifest in their pastimes, all those bhagas of Bhagavan. And the Padma Purana verse says, amongst the three, Krishna is the original source of all the others. Very similar to an understanding that's in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, along with the bhagas of Bhagavan, the one of the primary characteristics of a great personality, what to speak of Bhagavan, is compassion. So back to compassion is something you feel. Compassion is something that you know about the other person so that you can direct those feelings appropriate to the person. And then something that you want to do for the benefit of that person. So there's affective and there's active. And Ramayana is filled with it. Very, very charming transcendental literature that teaches us, among other things, one of the primary things is virtue. Maryada Purushottama, the personality of Godhead in the form of Ramachandra teaches the ideal character of a perfectly virtuous person, Maryada Purushottama, and amongst them, compassion. So let's see if there's some discussion on the topic of the compassion of Lord Ramachandra. I purposely wanted to allow a little time for discussion because look at all the people around the room here. There's somebody who's going to want to discuss some topics about Ramachandra. Is the cutoff time seven? Who's our timekeeper? I can't hear you. Is seven o'clock the right cutoff time? How many? 650. We have another three more minutes. Oh. Someone raised their hand. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the insightful uh, life of Lord Ramachandra. Generally, I mean, uh, you have Rupa Goswami who wrote... Who Speak wrote, slowly. Generally what? Rupa Goswami wrote the Bhakti Rasamrita. Yes, Sindhu, he did. And he is totally sold out to Lord Chaitanya, who is also super uh, karuna. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's very compassionate. Why did he choose... Uh, Lord Ramachandra over Lord... Uh, he didn't choose over. It's just who, who they're the lords of. The presiding deity of this rasa is this lord. The presiding deity of that rasa is that lord. He didn't spin a dial, come up with something creative. That, they're the lords of that particular rasa. Just He has the acumen, the capacity to, to know those things which you and I don't have the capacity to know. You know, based upon scripture, etc. but it's compelling. It's not, he's spun the dial. Is it clear? Then Lord Chaitanya would, uh, would be the, the, the deity for, for which... For, for which um... He's not described as the one, any one of the principal rasas or secondary rasas. The Moho Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema. He's the most munificent because he gave Krishna Prema. But it's not in that list of Rupa Goswami. Okay. Is it okay? Thank you. Okay.
Okay, Chirag, take it away. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. His Holiness Ramapur Swami Maharaj, please uh, help me appreciate Maharaj visiting us again. <laughs> Maharaj uh, visits throughout the U.S. and uh, preaches and teaches students at uh, many, many universities. And when Maharaj visits here in Houston, he makes a point to also visit Texas A&M and uh, Rice University among many others that he has enlightened so many students and of course we are very grateful that Maharaj spends a little time here in Houston Temple as well. So Maharaj will be here on the actual Ramanomi day that's coming up this Tuesday. He will be giving the morning class. Our program is in the evening starting at 630. If you want to come and listen to Maharaj in the morning please make a point to come here and listen to Maharaj speak about Lord Ramachandra on Tuesday, April 16. That is the actual day of Lord Ramachandra Appearance Day or as we say it, Ramanomi. Today we do not have any sponsors so those of you that would like to become a sponsor you can let me know or if you had a young noisy child and you wanted to sponsor today's Sunday feast you can do that as well. I say that with tongue in cheek uh, because as Maharaj said there's only two people that are not very familiar with uh, the noise in a household. Most of us are familiar with that noise and we're used to it. However it is very disturbing to the general class session. So if you have a young child and you want to attend the temple, make sure you ask your spouse to come along and maybe he or she can stay outside with the child that is not going to be comfortable sitting here Thank for an extended much. period. So you can always make that commitment and still come to the temple and you can take turns. Have a husband come in, take darshan, sit down with the kids and then have mom or wife come in and take darshan as well. So you can always make that adjustment. A donor is sponsoring today's Sunday feast. Want to remain anonymous. It is in memory of their parents. We have received our book distribution score for this week. 13 maha books, 16 large books, 25 small books, giving you a total of 54 books that were distributed this week. Yeah. Wanted to also remind you about every Thursday evening there is a kirtan program that happens here starting at 7 p.m. Arati and it goes on till 8.30 only program on Thursday evening is Sankirtan, so all of you are encouraged and invited to attend. Also wanted to ask you to save the date, June 8th and June 9th, which is a key highlight would be Kirtan Mela, and there will be a flower Abhishek of our deities, as this wow. will be the 10th year anniversary of our installation and also installation of Shishi Radha Giridari. There will be more details that will be available soon. Madhav Charan Prabhu is working on the details and as soon as available we'll start sharing the details with you about the Kirtan program and the other festivities. Believe it or not, it's been 10 years since we have moved in this wonderful temple. Our 7 p.m. Arati will be chanted by his Grace Vatsal Prabhu. So the family that is sponsoring encouraged to attend the front area and offer the Arati lamp. One more reminder I was asked to make is about prashadam, the distribution, prashadam etiquette. Those of you that have young children, you take full plate, throw prashadam away because your child is not able to consume 
please be mindful and please make sure that you don't waste your prasadam. Also, we have a restaurant connected to our temple, so if you're coming to the temple, please be sure to use the parking lot behind Gauranga Hall and not Govinda's restaurant because the restaurant parking lot is reserved for the customers that dine at Govinda's restaurant. If you're comfortable or you have been comfortable in taking prasadam plates home, uh, please be mindful that now we have a church that comes in and takes the leftover prasadam so that we can distribute prasadam to a church where there are a whole lot of needy people. So instead of you taking prasadam home, make sure you save some for the ones that we distribute at the church. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. Very rare bonus five minutes. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Aum Vishnu Vajaya Salvation Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravane Pracharine Livisesha Shunyavadi Pastyachadeshatarine Namaste Sarasati Deve Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadha Sri Vasadi Gobhakta Vrinda Jaya Sri Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Hare